The Godwin Years, a special program presented by the Virginia Association of Electric Cooperatives. Will you repeat after me the word of the oath required of you by the Constitution of the State of Virginia? I, Mills Edwin Godwin, Jr. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. I was fortunate to come on the Virginia scene at a time when the people of Virginia were ready for the progress that has come about. They were uh, ready to the extent that they were willing to provide the financial means to see this happen. Now, we have tried to project Virginia's future upon uh, the proposition that agriculture would be one phase of it, that industrial development would be another, and that tourism would be a third. And these three, uh, we refer to them as the uh, legs of a three-legged stool, that uh, it uh, is a solid base for uh, the future of Virginia. The Commonwealth of Virginia opened a travel information office in Rockefeller Center New York City in 1967, and another in the 9th Street office building, Richmond, in 1968. The Washington office, there for 34 years, was relocated in 1969 with modern facilities. Additionally, the state opened three information stations along highways in 1968, with three more to be opened early in 1970. billion dollars a year coming into Virginia from tourism and we are spending out of the general fund in Virginia a million dollars a year on behalf of promoting tourism and it's paying off. It brings many people to our state, they spend their money with us, we benefit economically from it. I think we've made uh, good beginnings and we can do a great deal more to attract uh, more uh, uh, tourists uh, to our state. the last four years, agricultural export marketing has received increased emphasis. One achievement has been the construction uh, and use of this export cattle facility here at Deepwater Terminal in Richmond, Virginia. Today, Virginia is reaping the benefit of the Department of Agriculture's export marketing program. We have increased our dollar value some eight million dollars during the past four years. We have over 90 million dollars of raw agriculture products being marketed through these facilities and we have over 300 uh, million dollars of processed agriculture products being marketed in the world of, about us. I found that uh, in my calls in Europe on these two trade missions that I've been on, uh, uh, more than just an ordinary willingness on the part of the foreign people to uh, discuss the advantages that Virginia has to offer with port uh, development and uh, trade and commerce moving through our ports, uh, almost a desire on their part that uh, they get into the act with us and uh, they think they've got something to offer us by way of imports and 
we've got something to offer them, uh, certainly in the export trade. Some remarkable achievements were made in animal disease control in Virginia during the last four years. Two of these diseases, brucellosis in cattle and cholera in hogs or swine, will soon be eradicated and Virginia will be clad free of these diseases. The Commission of the Industry of Agriculture recently, recently uh, completed a very dramatic study dealing with the opportunities in Virginia agriculture. It indicates that this industry, which is now a $3 billion industry, can grow to over four and one half billion dollars by 1980. The Rural Affairs Study Commission has now completed its report, which deals with rural development in Virginia. I think as Virginia moves from an agrarian economy in a rural state to a more urbanized uh, and metropolitan state, that uh, the problems of not only of the core cities, but the problems of the suburban areas, uh, they're not going to lessen, they're going to uh, increase. I believe that the future will show that perhaps the recommendations of the Hahn Commission were, uh, were very soundly conceived and, uh, and based, uh, and I believe that many of them will in time be implemented. We were not uh, quite ready for it in Virginia for, from a political standpoint. Well, Virginia has more to offer it relates to industrial development than uh, almost any other state in the nation. We are midway between the north and the south on the Atlantic uh, seaboard. Uh, we have a great Port of Hampton Roads, it's ice free the year round. We've done a great deal with containerized uh, facilities in our Virginia ports, and New York and Hampton Roads are now the best containerized ports on the East Coast. But the proximity of the Hampton Roads ports of call, Newport News, Norfolk, and Portsmouth, to the sea uh, is a great advantage. Uh, they're close by. Doesn't take long to get right out from the open ocean right into the pier. And uh, it's a great harbor with deep water facilities and this is very attractive to shipping. Richmond and Hopewell and uh, Alexandria, uh, we have uh, an ideal situation for port development. And we have the great rivers and streams in Virginia uh, that uh, attract so much of our industry. Our coal shipments, of course, out of the Hampton Roads ports are uh, the largest anywhere on the East Coast. 
and represent a large volume percentage-wise of our shipments out of our port. But uh, Hampton Roads, the port cities, uh, being located strategically as they are midway the Atlantic uh, uh, seaboard, are natural center for shipments from states in the Midwest and further west than we are. And I think with the rail facilities that we have, N and W having merged with the uh, Virginian Railroad some years ago, and now about to merge with the CNO and the BNO, are we going to have the greatest railroad system here in Virginia of any state in the Union? I am standing on the future site of the recently announced $50 million plant of Imperial Chemical Industries of Great Britain. Uh, this is in Chesterfield County. Uh, this represents the largest initial capital investment ever made in a new plant in Virginia and is a result of the state's international development program initiated by Governor Godwin. Uh, Virginia has had an unparalleled record over the past four years in industrial development. Uh, this includes 480 new manufacturing plants and 442 uh, expansions of existing industries such as the Ford Motor Company in Norfolk. This means an additional 61,000 jobs for Virginia. We haven't just tried to dot Virginia's landscape with uh, smokestacks. We've tried to bring in the sophisticated industries as well as those that uh, have something to offer but not quite so sophisticated. Uh, we've had marked success in the last, uh, during these four years, building upon the progress that Governor Harrison uh, made during the preceding administration when he really set up the machinery for this great effort. educational program has been geared up, particularly with the community college effort, with its emphasis uh, on the vocational and technical trades, supplying to our existing industries and preparing for our new industries the type of uh, people that will be needed uh, for the jobs that uh, are available. In the Virginia Employment Commission has a variety of training programs and has made significant strides in the past few years in providing the labor skills that are necessary for Virginia to enjoy industrial growth. The interstate uh, highway system uh, has been financed largely with federal funds, but uh, we ought to remember that those federal funds are really state funds that have been sent up there. That and we are more than 60% completed in Virginia today. And we finish, we'll have nearly 1,100 miles of interstate highways in Virginia that uh, along with our arterial system of four lane divided highways. And incidentally, that's a system uh, of some 1,700 miles that is financed almost exclusively from state funds. But when these two systems in Virginia are tied together, We'll have every community in Virginia that has as many as 3,500 people either on an interstate highway or an arterial highway. some distance uh, yet from a full realization of uh, uh, even the goals that were established uh, back in 1966 or even in 1962 when Governor Harrison came in when the arterial system in Virginia was initiated. squeeze. We've had uh, bids to come in in recent months that have been 100% above estimate. So uh, we are behind schedule and we are going to continue behind schedule in Virginia.
unless additional revenue is found for our highway program. One of the great secrets of trying to help those few undeveloped areas in Virginia uh, is the putting in of new roads and better roads than they now have. This is particularly true in the western part of the state and the mountainous regions. Uh, we uh, just as well face it that uh, one of the reasons they have not shared the full uh, uh, prosperity that Virginia's had to offer has been because of the transportation difficulties that exist. Uh, we have new concepts in transportation, uh, our airplanes. We have now 92 licensed airports in Virginia, more than we've ever had, and compare very favorably with any state in the Union in this regard. Electricity. Electricity was the door that opened into a new era for the rural people of Virginia, and the Rural Electric Cooperative was the key that unlocked that door. Electric energy has relieved the burden of physical labor for rural citizens. It's aided farm modernization, made the country home as comfortable and livable as the city home, and attracted industry to less populated areas. Fifteen electric cooperatives in Virginia serve a half million people with over 28,500 miles of line. Their $105 million capital investment has generated over $500 million in retail sales during the past 34 years. Their annual payroll is over five and a quarter million. All earnings generated by these electric businesses stay within their service area. In 1969 alone, they paid state and local taxes totaling $1,746,000. Good citizenship and responsible business behavior are objectives highly cherished by Virginia's electric cooperatives. They have advanced this slogan, step out for Virginia and to aid development of rural areas and relieve the urban crisis, the electric cooperatives developed this coin. One side states, 70% of all Americans live on 1% of the land. The other side depicts opportunities unlimited in rural America. The two sides dramatize the urgency of achieving a better balance in population and economic opportunities between rural and urban areas. It demonstrates the electric cooperatives' concern for our future. I would say that the greatest area of progress that has uh, taken place, of course, has been in the field of education, both uh, uh, elementary, high school education, as well as uh, education of institutions of higher learning. I would have wanted to have seen the community college uh, system fully implemented if I could before I went out of office. Uh, it's pretty well been done, but we have some more to do. And uh, this system is founded upon the concept that every high school graduate in Virginia who has the ability to profit from the experience will have the opportunity for some education beyond the high school level. Uh, the basic reason I choose, chose John Tyler was the money aspect because I could save money by going here my first two years and then tr planning on transfer to a out of uh, city college. I went to Madison College last year and my grades weren't good enough to go back again this year so I came here to pull them up and so I can go back again. My first reason for coming here was to get out of the army and after being here for about two quarters I said to myself it'd be a, a big waste for me just to go to school to just miss the army. So after that I decided to go here because I knew I needed the knowledge. Then when I went to California this summer, I found out how hard it was for a man to do something if he didn't have any education, which is true. Well, I just wanted to take a two-year secretarial program, and I didn't want to go to a four-year college. I just wanted to go for two years. So you uh, applied to a two-year school? They say, all right, come on. We'll give you a chance. Because I'm not a high school graduate and I can't get to a four-year college. But now that I'm over here, I like it. The many noteworthy advances in public education include the upgrading of certification standards for teachers, the further strengthening of the standards for the accreditation of our high schools, and the development of a program for the first time of accrediting our elementary schools. State appropriations for public education have more than doubled, 
and salaries for our classroom teachers have risen significantly. The adoption of the statewide sales tax with the provision that a portion of the revenues be returned to the localities for our public schools provides a new source of revenue for public education. When I came into office in 1966 and advocated the general retail sales tax, and particularly that portion of that program that uh, uh, had as its purpose the approval in the 1966 session of an additional 1% to come into effect in 1968, I don't think that I would have dared suggest that or uh, to work as hard as I did for it uh, if I had been thinking about running for re-election in 1969. Uh, because uh, it's not a popular thing to increase taxes ever. Uh, people don't vote for you because you increase taxes. They're much more apt to vote for you because you promise to reduce taxes. The incomes of the people of this state are higher than the incomes of any of the people anywhere east of the Mississippi, save one other state. Our taxes today at the state level rate among the lowest one-fifth of all the states of this union. And you come and say to me that the boys and girls that live in the homes and the families across this state are not entitled to the best that we can give them. It's hard to convince me, it's hard to convince, I hope, a majority of the people of Virginia that there is any reason that only three out of 10 Virginia children 18 to 21 years old, have any opportunity for college or post high school training. When the national average is five out of 10, and we are the second lowest of any state in the Southeast. As you know, I had been uh, a strong advocate of the pay-as-you-go plan. I had uh, fought for it over a period of many years. It was not easy for me to take the position that I did uh, with the General Assembly of 1968 and advocate the general obligation bond issue permitted under the Constitution uh, then, uh, which totaled $81 million. But I could find no possible alternative that was acceptable. We had to have the revenue. The 1968 the bond issue referendum proved to be very highly favorable, a very successful vote. But no one knew that that was going to turn out that way. I do know that it's generally recognized that we can do a better job of rehabilitating some of our mentally ill than we have been doing in Virginia. I'm on the grounds of the Virginia Treatment Center for Children here in Richmond. This is one of our most important programs for the treatment of emotionally disturbed and mentally ill children, as well as an extensive training area for child psychiatrists. It's come to its full fruition in the past few years, and it's one of our most outstanding programs. Another significant aspect of our program is the Northern Virginia Mental Health Institute, which opened January of 1968. Since that time, we have admitted about 800 patients, voluntary over 95% of them. This involves new treatment techniques, a highly trained staff, and a small unit which is very significantly coordinated with the community programs. Uh, we need uh, more professionally trained people in this field. Uh, you have to have a rather dedicated type of person for these kind of jobs, not for just the professional jobs, but for those uh, jobs that are the, even of the maintenance and custodial type. Another very important element in the last few years has been the passage of the bond issue, which brought about the provision of planning money for the Institute of Psychiatry here at MCV. We hope that uh, we will have construction money during this con coming General Assembly to bring this important tra training, teaching, and research institute into being. the amount of state appropriation that is being made uh, per patient in Virginia, for patient care, is among the lowest in the country.
back through Virginia history, we had a decade in which uh, we did a lot for highways uh, in Virginia. We have had a decade now in which much has been done for education. I would not at all be surprised to see the next decade uh, devoted largely to the advancement and the care and training and rehabilitation of our mentally ill. One of my great hopes uh, has always been uh, that when I go out, that I can go out gracefully, but that I can also go out, uh, uh, not change so far as the personality of the man is concerned, uh, that my uh, head, while still being high, would not uh, be high with the sense that, uh, well, I've been governor of Virginia, and I can't get back down to the level of uh, other people because of that experience. I don't feel that will be the case. All hasn't been done that uh, we would have liked to have seen done. And if I could serve another four years, I'm sure I'd go out feeling that there was still an unfinished uh, task. That's life itself. Uh, uh, when it's all over, we, we haven't done it all. and. Uh, no man completes the job. Now Virginia has entered a new decade. The years ahead will be both challenging and demanding, not only for state leaders, but for each and every Virginian. Although much has been accomplished in recent years, much remains to be done. Virginia has never had greater opportunities. Working together, building on past accomplishments, we can realize these opportunities and the 70s can become Virginia's golden decade. This is our challenge. This is our opportunity. Virginia has a great heritage rooted in her soil. Now Virginia is moving forward rapidly as an industrialized state. Her future potential rests largely on her ability to deal effectively with proper and orderly development of non-metropolitan areas while solving urban problems. A necessary ingredient in developing any area is a reliable source of energy. The rural electric cooperatives that have served the rural public so well for 35 years must continue to be viable free enterprise businesses for the total good of all Virginians. Each of these cooperatives is owned and controlled by its members through an elected board of directors. Here's the essence of free enterprise and democracy at work, rendering an essential service to improve the social and economic welfare of the people they serve. One half million citizens of the Commonwealth. The Virginia Association of Electric Cooperatives is happy to have brought to you tonight this special telecast about Virginia during the last four years. advance on all fronts has been uh, uh, so uh, pronounced that this has been the great thing that the administration has done. It's lifted the sights of the people of Virginia to new horizons and it's uh, backed those uh, uh, dreams up with some positive action on many fronts that uh, have expressed its, uh, themselves in a way that have been beneficial to many of our citizens and I hope to all of our citizens. 